This is an AI video editor that allows me to select a video. It will be uploaded there. I can hit remove silence and then it takes care of removing the silence based on the default settings. This might be different for your specific case. Yeah, along the video, I'll, I'll explain more about these controls. But for now, just understand that they are responsible for defining what is a silence inside of your video. Then I can hit transcribe. If I go into the dialogue, you can check the transcription progress. After everything is transcribed, I can listen to each of the this is a test video. Each of the segments that were transcribed, let me hit to X to understand how the system exactly works because well as you play these segments the silences are removed from the playback so this, this is a test video to see how this then you get a better understanding of how the final result will be after that we can filter out the segments using ai so this is basically looking at all the segments and telling us hey this segment was repeated so let's remove these repeated segments as they are probably the wrong segments. And then we get this final result. So there's a lot to improve here. If I hit play here, I want to see if it cuts off the silences as well as cut off a very important part, which was the part where I said, this is a test video to see how this system works. You can just hit filter with AI again. Nice. So this is a test video to see how this system works. Cause I want to see if it cuts off the silences as well as the repetitive things I say. And also those filter words that are placed in between. This was better, but it's still identified a because and well here. And since we don't really have much control over what the AI identifies as the segments that we should keep. I added a way for us to remove the selected filters here. And also if it did remove something that I wanted to keep, then I could just click add and that segment will be added to the final JSON that you can find right over here. With this final JSON, we can basically download an XML. With this XML, let me hit download, get the directory of my file, export XML. Okay, it's up there. Let me go over to my Premiere file import select the xml right there and this is what we'll get now i have to go inside the generated sequence and just close those gaps we can do that by going over to sequence close gap ripple delete and this is a test video to see how this system works because i want to see if it cuts off the silences as well as the repetitive things i say and also those filter words that are placed in between as for the srt it just generates transcriptions for us place inside of premiere which just helps us cut out the video way better and then the download json just downloads this json right here now let's move on to the why i built this in the first place it was a project that took me nearly 26 hours and this measurement I got from the Waka Time website. The free version only allows us to see like past seven days, but right up here, we can see how much time we spent in total for that specific project. This all started because of this single video where at the time O3 Mini High was launched from OpenAI and I wanted to test it, but I wanted to use like a real life use case, which was my own. How could I edit videos faster? How could I get at least the silences edited way faster without me having to manually go through all of the silences and removing them. And additionally, I could segment the video as you've seen in the application and then remove those repetitive parts. So a lot of the editing process would be much faster and I would gain time along my day to do way better things. So I really explained the process of how I got to that point. And if you've already watched this, feel free to skip to the next part of the video. I used OpenAI's new O3 Mini High model to create a tool that automatically edits my entire video without writing a single line of code. Since this was a test of the new model, I let it handle everything from start to finish. But breaking it down, the process really came down to four main tasks. The first task was starting by asking the LLM to create a Python script that processes videos in a local folder named raw. The script would cut out the silences in the video, leaving a small margin to avoid cutting sound waves. It should also use AI to analyze the video and determine where to make the cuts. I wasn't really sure what to expect, so guess that just starting would lead to something interesting. The model GPT-30 Mini suggested a method where each video segment would be sent to the LLM, which would then decide whether to keep it or discard it. The final output would be a compilation of approved segments. The second step was fixing outdated code. This took about five prompts to get it done since it kept using OpenAI Whisperer API code that was deprecated. For this step, I had to give it some help so that it could provide me the correct code. The third task was adding logs for debugging to track each step and pinpoint where fixes were needed. This just made it easier to track exactly what was happening during the execution. And finally, I had an idea of how it could work. The model was analyzing each segment separately, meaning that it had no context to detect duplicates or inconsistencies. So what if I sent an entire structure JSON expecting to get it back only with the corrected segments? Yeah, so the code that I created in this video allowed me to have the complete video already edited and that was kind of bad because there were some parts that i wanted to fix and i do explain how i kind of solved that in this following video this final video is not flexible and what i mean by it not being flexible well, let's suppose that instead of these two segments we had multiple segments so this one this one over here this one and that if at some point the ai messed up and you need to change something especially in longer videos you would have to go to that segment find it inside the raw video cut that part off bring it back here that just adds another layer of complexity and depending on your recording and depending on the ai's results you'll have even more work than you would have initially if you just cut the video yeah so i did provide a solution where we were using the srts but i was getting a lot of problems where a bunch of people weren't able to 
either install the Python packages or the packages that they were installing were outdated. And not only that, but the control side of things is just better with an interface. Like adjusting this through a control panel is much better than going over to the code and manually like adjusting that. So the main idea of building this project was trying to build something entirely using AI. I would say 90 to 90% of this project was all AI but I don't want to mislead you like a lot of content creators out there do saying that you can create this entirely without knowing how to code at all because without knowing how to code at least the basics I couldn't just inform the AI hey I want you to create exactly this because it wouldn't understand like what what do you exactly need me to create here maybe it wouldn't understand that it needed to use this package maybe it would just output some dummy data and make you think that uh, the transcriptions are working. So even really simple things, if you would ask the AI to do that for you, it wouldn't understand what is the best solution. So for example, using Distal Whisper, and this is already talking about how it was built. So let me mark this right here. Just because I specified the Distal Whisper right here that you can use from Grok at 0 0.02 cents of a dollar per hour transcribed, this is probably like 15 times cheaper than the Whisper model from OpenAI. And probably it would just go with OpenAI. It would take a lot longer and it would be way more expensive. So just knowing like some really basic stuff can really help. Another thing that I see LLMs get wrong most of the times is placing a structure. So expecting the LLM to return you a structure, it doesn't always use this structured output schema. Down here, I expect a response format of that structured output schema. Some LLMs will place this inside of the prompt. And this is basically telling the LLM, hey, I expect you to output this JSON structure, but it's telling it by the prompt. And sometimes the LLM will answer something, okay, this is the JSON structure. And then it's already not in the JSON structure because there's a text in the middle of there. You have to use the response format, which is at least the parameter that the open router API expects. I did use the open router, which makes it much easier for us to use different models, like trying out the Gemini 2.0 flash for the first time. And then if that doesn't work, just go to the 2.5. If that doesn't work, then use GPT 4.0, which guarantees that if for some reason one model is down, the other one will work. The base of the project is that it's a Next.js project using ShadCN UI library. And this will mostly just run locally on your computer. If I were to place this in a server and use some GPUs to create out all these segments, it would be pretty expensive. I also thought of a way to monetize this, which I would charge for the AI calls. And then every time someone needed to transcribe or use AI to filter out the segments, they would hit my own end. And this could be created both as a software inside of the operating system, or it could be a plugin inside of Premiere Pro. But I just figured out that it would be just better to make this an open source project since everybody can collaborate with this project and make it just truly better. You can access this project over at my GitHub in the repository, which is set to public AI video editor. I explain more about how you can open this project up and leave it all set up for you to use it inside of the AI Forge school community, AI video editor next. Here I explain exactly what you need to do to run it. And then we have a comment section down here where if you have any questions or if you want to improve it in a specific way, but you don't know how to prompt cursor to do that, you can just drop that question down here in this post and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, how do I continue on building with this tool? Because there might be some changes that you'd like to perform. So let's go over to the project. Here's the project. Let me hit F5 to start it over. If I pick my video, I feel like this first card right here, the video doesn't have to be this big. I can just select this, find where in the code is that part. It's this component right here. And if I wanted to add some control buttons, just like I do for this part right here where I can click, let's see, I can click like 2X and then- This is a test video to understand how this- Right, let's add those controllers up here in the upload video part. And to do that, just head over to cursor. It's already selected with the upload card. Please add controls to the video in here as soon as it is uploaded. A play button, a 1X and 2X button as well. Make sure they change their appearance when selected. Make sure they use the project's default neoliberalism style and reduce the size of the video player as well. So let's see how it does with just this pump. Nice, so that, that was pretty fast. Let's see if it works. This is a test video to understand how the system exactly works because well, yeah, that's nice. We just didn't get the effects of the 2x button being as it works as it's clicked. It should because seem like it's selected, well, but I suppose it's fine. We can improve that later on. 
I believe this example was enough to get you started on the project. If you want to help and join the community while building this project out to attend for your specific case, maybe you're a video editor or you're a content creator and you, you're like me, you're lacking time because of this editing process. Well, join the AI Forge community and let's continue on building this project together. Remember to leave a like if this helped you at all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.